The story begins the day the shed came alive when his owner decides to paint him crimson red. The first thing he thought and said was, Where am I? Who am I? The shed then realizes the brand new bicycle resting inside his four walls and begins to fantasize. The sensation he felt about the bicycle was an unexplainable feeling better than no other. At times, he would go so far as to imagine himself as the bicycle. As he attempted to explain the, that there are only two types of happiness in the world, being a garage and being a bicycle, he asked the neighboring garage, You mean I should try to feel like a garage too? There is no other path. Of course you're not likely to succeed, but your chances are better than those of a kennel or a tobacco kiosk. And what if I feel like a bicycle? By all means, feel like one. I can't say you mustn't. For some of us, feelings of the lower kind are a limit, and there's nothing to be done about it. To the last remark made by the garage, shed number 12 responded with an offending question. What's that written in chalk on your side? None of your business, you cheap piece of plywood shit. One morning, the garage was demolished, and shed number 12 was left all alone. Close by to his left, there were two other sheds, but he tried not to acknowledge them because their contents of pickled cucumbers repulsed him. In the middle of summer, the owner and the woman came to the shed. Shed number 12 did not like her. She reminded him of everything he simply could not stand. His negative views of the shed were brought on by not only the woman's presence, but the scent of pickled cabbage that permeated off her skin. Shed number 12 began to think while the other two people began. Well, if we take down the shelves, it'll do fine. Just fine. This is a first class shed. No leaks or any other problems, and what a color. The owner of shed number 12 emptied him out and he was upset by this. All that was left was a forgotten hoop. Back when the bicycles still resided in the shed, and when they came back from their travels, shed number 12 never lost amazement from the beauty of them. These bicycles were the fulfillment of his life till the day that they were taken away for good. At this point, he did the best he could to maintain his individuality. After the bikes were removed, all that remained was their memory, but shed number 12 didn't have enough strength to feel the sadness. Eventually, workers came and all his sense of fear was demolished along with the empty shelves in the last part of his individual identity. One morning, he woke with a putrid stench of pickled cabbage permeating from the barrels. He then fainted. Two days later, he found himself no longer terrified of sheds 13 and 14. On one hand, he felt equal to them, but on the other, he felt a sense of terrible injustice. Number 13 and 14 explained to him that all he had gone through was just a normal life change that comes with age. The entry into the real world with its real difficulties and concerns always involves certain difficulties. One soul is occupied with entirely new problems. Never mind, you'll get used to it. It's only hard at the beginning. There was a change within shed number 12. He became simpler, and the past bothered him less and less, and it seemed as if nothing would change again. On a summer evening, he came across an incomprehensible object within himself, a dusty old plastic hoop, and his memories then began, began to flood back into his mind. But they were all broken pieces that led him nowhere. At that moment, he felt separated from the barrel, where he hadn't before. Then he suddenly heard a bicycle enter the yard, and a rider rang the bell. The sound was enough. Shed number 12 remembered. A bicycle, a highway, a sunset, a bridge over a river. This made him then see what he had once saw and began to see himself again. He knew he had to get rid of the barrel before it overtook him. He remembered the electric wires that ran beneath him, and so he squeezed the wires together with all his might. His deed was done. The wires touched and the flames began to thrive. His walls became ablaze and shed number 13 caught on fire too. This was the last thing shed number 12 noticed and then suddenly something unexpected happened. That same night, the woman from before was walking home in a foul mood and noticed that the sheds were completely gone from a fire. All that was left were the keys of shed number 12 and several torched planks from 13 and 14. As she continued walking, she felt scared and followed. She took a few more steps and glanced around and then noticed a light twinkling in the distance. A moment later, the spot of light was transformed into something totally unreal. A bicycle without a rider, flying high in the sky. It looked as if it had been nailed together with planks. The lights 
the bike gave off completely entranced the woman. She watched as the bike ascended higher in the sky, gathering speed till it was no longer but a spot in the sky. When she recovered her senses, the woman found herself sitting in the middle of the road. She stood up, shook herself off, completely forgetting. But then, she's of no interest to us.